G'day Ziggy D here with another Path of Exile guide. In this video I'm going to be going over uh, how I go about managing my wealth and how I go about managing trading in a new league. Since we're just starting this new uh, Anarchy and Onslaught leagues and one of the biggest most exciting things about these new leagues for me uh, is the fact that there's a brand new fresh economy and uh, starting from scratch again I think is very fun. Uh, so in this video as I said I'll just go over some of the, the ways that I go about managing that to start building up my wealth because you really want to start building up your wealth to be able to get the gear and the rare skills and things like that you need uh, by the time you start getting into late cruel and merciless and things like that so far I feel like I'm doing pretty okay as well so hopefully some of these tips will help out you guys uh, if you guys are fairly experienced path of exile players this guide probably won't help out too much but it should help out you newbies uh, a little bit hopefully anyway let's get started uh, so I've got a ton of things I want to cover with this so hopefully I can remember uh, most of it uh, now just to begin with I'll talk about what I pick up uh, so I've done a previous video in the past where I talk about the general things that you should be skipping over and picking up. Uh, I do fairly similarly to that, but in a new league, there's actually a few important changes. Now, the first thing is, uh, usually I won't even bother ever picking up Scrolls of Wisdom, uh, and only I'll, occasionally I'll pick up Portal Scrolls, or I'll just pick them up if I need one immediately. However, in a brand new league like this, I think it's worth always keeping, uh, I, I like to keep around 10. Now, the thing about this is some people will disagree with me on this because some people say if you pick up every single scroll of wisdom that you see, you can trade it up to higher currencies and then you can, you know, you can trade those up to things or you can trade the scrolls of wisdom to people. And people are looking for scrolls of wisdom in these new leagues. However, I think the time it takes to go that, especially uh, to do that, to pick up all those scrolls of wisdom and then to manage them and then to trade them, uh, you're losing out on farming time, you're losing out on efficiency. To me, I relate it to when you're playing Diablo 2, Diablo 2 or Diablo 3 or any other action RPG. It's like picking up those piles of five gold. That you, you know, it's really not worth your time. You're losing efficiency in doing it. So I, I tend to skim over those for the most part. Now, also, I usually won't pick up rares while I'm leveling, especially in uh, a non-hardcore league. Uh, the only rares I'll pick up are ones that I actually need. So, for example, if I come across a full plate that's rare, I'll definitely pick that up because it could be an upgrade for me. However, if I come across a, a rare dagger, for, for, uh, for instance, when I'm leveling, and I'm playing like a, you know, a marauder with a mace, I'm not going to bother picking up the rare daggers because they're just not going to be worth much. However, starting a brand new league, this isn't the case, and leveling rares can be worth uh, one alp to one chaos, depending on how good they are. So that is something I'll do to build up that initial wealth, and that's been fairly successful for me so far. So for example, I've picked up this course scepter here, we'll just go ahead and identify it. Okay, this is just vendor one there. Uh, basically, there's three tiers of these rares. There's ones, identify all of your rares as well, this is something I, I, I like to do in a new league like this, since uh, they are potentially worth something, otherwise you might just vendor them unidentified anyway. Um, yeah, so this one is a vendor one. The second type of tier is ones that you can sell for about uh, one arc. And what I'll usually do is, while I'm running, before I actually head back to town, I'll just pop those in trade chat. Now, the way I like to do that is, I'll give you an actual example here, is I go, want to sell, and then I uh, link this guy. And then I say, like, you know, it's a level 20, what is it? Oh, it's, only, it's only level 15. Uh, one for example, and then if say it has like tried damage rolls, I'll go over, like try damage rolls and attack speed, and then just say one arc. Now you might say it's a really good, it's a fairly good rare. You might be able to get slightly more than you might be able to bargain it, but uh, the main thing you're going for here is speed. Now if it's a really really good one, as in it has six good stats, but it's still only a low level rare, then you can probably sell it for a chaos. So put in one chaos or near offer or something like that, and maybe if it's really really good. Uh, you can open up bidding, but most of, most mostly you're going for speed on that one. Now I'm obviously not going to link that one because it's actually terrible, and no one, people will laugh at me if I sell that. <laughs> so do that now. And as I said, uh, if you don't sell it within, maybe I usually link them like twice, like once when I first identify it, and then I wait like you know 10, 10 minutes or something, and I link it again. And then if it hasn't sold by that point, I'll just sell it to the vendor. It's really not worth uh, taking any extra time just for that one alchemy. So I'll go ahead and sell that now. And the next thing is make sure you're picking up all of your uh, chromatic orbs and also every level pretty much uh, if you're in town like don't make a trip back to town to do it but every uh, level that you're in town check through just make sure there's no chromatic ones because even if you're trading a transmutation or an alteration for a chromatic orb so it doesn't look like there's any for me to buy here no they, that's worth trading for those up because chromatic orbs are quite hard to build up uh, early on you will need a few to sort out your links for example i had to throw a few into this full plate to be able to get three reds because for some reason i was getting a lot of blues even though it's a strength armor anyway so that <laughs> that's that one now the your main 
currency draws, the things that are really build up your currency. And for example, the reason I have things like, you know, a Blessed, a Divine, and a couple Chaos, uh, at this point only a Normal, is by finding quality gems. Now, you're not always going to find quality gems, but it's actually it doesn't seem to be that rare. Like in my experiences leveling this time and many other times before, you find quite a few quality gems. Usually, however, if they're you know, like under 10 quality or something like that, they're just not going to sell. However, this early on in a new league, people really want to start getting those quality gems, especially things like Freeze Pulse, Lightning Strike, and all that good jazz. So I sold a 15% Lightning Strike within about 30 minutes for uh, a bit, I think it was about a, a Divine or something like that, which is, is about 9 Chaos equivalent. So pretty good. Uh, might be actually worth more than that like I might have got gypped a little bit but it's a pretty good currency income for now and uh, I'm gonna turn that later into like a multi strike or some you know some good gear for my character once he reaches merciless so pretty uh, just trade those through as you go now things like that if you find something like you know that's a skill with a higher quality percent then that's the type of thing you're gonna want to take bids on same with uniques as well some uniques uh, especially the less good uniques, okay, the more crappy uniques, uh, just try and palm those up for an Ulk or a Chaos uh, as quickly as you can because uh, people will try and buy those early on, but later on down the track they're not going to be worth anything at all. However, if you do find a really good leveling rare or a, uh, oh, sorry, a really good leveling unique or a good potential endgame unique, uh, something like Searing Touch or something like that, you're going to want to try and uh, take bids for that. Now, it's really hard to say how much these things are worth because in normal default league, uh, or, you know, in Hardcore League, there might be an established price of, say, 9 exalts for this particular unique. However, no one has any exalts this early on. So you have to actually uh, realize that not only are your items worth less, but currency is worth more. So it kind of balances out, kind of. Uh, but you you have to just, um, I guess, take decide whether it's worth keeping for you, uh, and then trying to sell later on if it's something you can get for more exalts. But most of the time, I prefer to sell it for currency so that I can quickly get what I need. Now the next point I wanted to make, which I'm glad I just remembered because it was a pretty important one, was uh, the things you need to buy. Now a big part of managing your wealth is uh, timing when you actually purchase things. Now for example, I need a multi-strike gem. Uh, I, w I watch the trade chat while I'm doing this, while I'm leveling through here. And I get the sense now that multi-strike is in high demand and there's not many people with it, which makes sense. It's basically like chain and the fact that you can only get it through drops and it's a very high demand for pretty much any melee build. Uh, now, for me to buy that now, I would pretty much need to sink all of my currency into that. And I don't really need it yet. It's something that's going to be fantastic for me to have in late Cruel or Merciless. Uh, and if I wait until then to buy it, or if I wait until I see people linking multi-strike, so just uh, to spread this out to uh, almost any type of item, if you're seeing a bunch of people asking for it, and, and it's something you know you really want in the future, and even if you have the currency to get it now, uh, don't try and purchase it then. If you, as much as you can, try and push it back until uh, more people are linking it than asking for it, or until you know someone links it and no one. No one gives them any offers or something like that. So just just watch those things. Sit on them. N know that you need that later on. So I know I need multi-strike later on, but it's not something I'm going to rush out and purchase now because I'm going to I'm going to sink all of my currency into that. Uh, you know, you can you can talk to people and get a you know test out the waters for how much uh, a multi-strike's worth. Like at the moment, uh, I think multi-strike's going for pretty much. Uh, I think an offer I would have been able to do was one divine, one blessed, and uh, two chaos or something like that. So you know, quite quite a fair bit. But if I can, if I can wait a day or two, which you know won't really be too difficult to do, uh, I can do that. So you can progress that wealth, you can maintain your wealth, and then you can sell the things that you do get as quickly as possible when there's more demand for it than there are is supply. Just take advantage of that supply and demand. Uh, but I think that's. Oh, no, I wanted to cover a few other things, actually. Uh, in terms of vendor recipes, I don't bother with quality weapons or armor because uh, I've always found that you find more uh, blacksmith whetstones and armor scraps than you actually really need, uh, you know, in in the medium term to long term. The thing, uh, things I will pick up, however, are superior flasks as well. Uh, so pretty much grab any of those superior flasks because by the time you get to Merciless, you're going to need a bunch of glass blower baubles and uh, demand for those is, is really high at that point as well. So it's almost impossible to buy any. So pick up those as you go and then by the time you get to Merciless, you can trade all those in and you can upgrade all of your flasks. Good stuff. You also want to say, oh, actually, this one, I just realized something. I'm a bit of an idiot. They've taken Onyx Amulets out. So saving up your gems uh, to trade in for the Onyx Amulet recipe is probably not really worth it anymore. Anyway, I learned something here. <laughs> Uh, I think that's I think that's almost everything. If you guys have any other questions about um, wealth and trading management or how to go about trading, um, 
feel free to ask in the comments and I'll try and answer as best I can. Trading is one of the most difficult things to do in Path of Exile, especially when it comes to haggling and things like that. You know, be nice to people. Uh, you know, give, give them offers and if they don't respond to you or if they ignore you or do something stupid like that, then uh, just let it go and uh, you'll find you'll find someone else better out there. It can be, trading can be a nightmare sometimes, but it can also be really good. Anyway, that's it for now. Hopefully you guys will find this helpful. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.